it, this one is almost number 32 backwards. Again, it, the picture is basically the same idea here. Um, we're given that angle F right there is congruent to angle one. We're also given that EH is congruent to FG and we're given angle one is also congruent to angle two. Um, the biggest thing that I see here is kind of people love to jump to, okay, we've got base angles, HI, so HI is congruent to uh, GF, opposite sides are congruent, therefore it is a parallelogram, not so fast. Opposite sides being congruent just by itself is not enough to prove that it's a parallelogram. We also need those opposite sides to be parallel, which that angle F and the angle 2 give me parallel because we've got um, corresponding angles are congruent, which makes HI parallel to GF. So we need parallel and we need congruent. Let's do it. All right. We've got our statement. Now, organizing this in my head, um, I'm going to start with I'm going to start with congruency. I think it's the one that jumps out the most. Then build in that parallel, and uh, and then once I got parallel and congruent, then I've got a parallelogram. All right. So to get congruent, I need one congruent to two, which is right there, and then um, that gives me HE is congruent to HI, and then, or I'll call it EH, and that gives me HI is congruent to FG. All right, so just those two givens are the only two givens that I need to get to my congruency. All right. Let's do it. Uh, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, given. And since angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, that will mean that uh, EH is congruent to uh, IH, uh, and that's base. All right, and then I can say, furthermore, since EH is congruent to FG, why? Because of the given, I can blend these two statements and I get that IH is congruent to FG. And that's again that trait through property. Or substitution. All right. So now I've got the opposite sides are congruent. Now I need them to be parallel. They're parallel because angle F is congruent to angle 2. Now, obviously, my given is that angle F is congruent to angle 1. So let's start there. Angle F is congruent to angle 1, given. And then based on the other given, so this is kind of requiring me to kind of look, go back in time. So maybe I draw myself a little arrow here just to show where that reasoning is coming from since it's not immediately above. Um, angle F is congruent to angle two. Again, transitive or substitution. All right, um, and now since those angles are congruent, HI or IH, since we're naming them from the bottom, IH is parallel to FG. FH parallel to FG, um, and that is corresponding And now we've got the opposite sides are congruent, the opposite sides are parallel, and so we can say that, oh, I already forgot the name of it, FGHI. 
F G H I is a parallel O gram. Um, and we want an abbreviation, we want a shortcut here, but really it's just opposite sides are both parallel and there's a short note of the group. 